Hey kids, welcome to Friday. It's Friday 5, right here on the TDT. That's right, that's right, the TDT. It's sticky for some reason. I, it just is. Um, if I can get it out properly, it is. I got stuff, stuff to share with you guys. And of course, as always, please, please, if you will, give it out for, that's right, the Falcon. He's here, even though he's looking for a new job. Because, as you know, we are going on hiatus after today. Today, being the Friday Five, the last episode of the TDT, while well, we wait to see if we're going to get picked up. You know, we're supposed to come back in April, but, um, you know, anything could happen during hiatus. And so, I'm not going to lie to you, the Falcon is out there fielding offers. Yeah, he's got plenty of offers. And, uh... And there's a possibility that we that if we do come back for another season here on the TVT, he may already have had other job offers. So I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I had to put it out there. I had to tell people I didn't want them to be surprised if we come back for another season. And the Falcon isn't here because he's taking another job offer. So I think it's important for you to know that. Um, and uh, yeah, that's all I got. I will be here because you know. Few things. Number one, uh, they, I still have lingering Oscar fever. I'm not going to bore you with my with my Oscar fever details, but it's safe to say that my beloved Tina Fey was in Los Angeles because she was part of the Oscar telecast. She was here, in town, just miles from where I am. Don't call Tina. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. No, knock on the door. Didn't even send one of your minions to uh, to speak to me to see about my three character arc on Thirty One. That's okay though. I know you're busy. I get it. But I'm, I'm still waiting. Uh, another thing to share with you. You know the constant battle of trying to cut back on the sugar and the chunky monkey situation and all that sort of stuff. And there's so many things that happen in my world that do not make it easy for me to be able to focus, laser focus on the cutback of the sugar. And one of those, those, those just devil things is uh, Trader Joe's Sea Salt Brownie Petites. That's right. I don't know if you have a Trader Joe's in your hood, in your part of the world. If you don't, consider yourself lucky because these Sea Salt Brownie Petites, my friends, uh, <laughs> are, are just spectacular. They're small. They're deceptive, yet they're so powerful. They're a chocolatey, delicious Belgian chocolate brownie bite with a little bit of sea salt. Oh, it's rude to eat on camera, isn't it? I'm gonna do it anyways. Just stay on. <laughs> it's so good. So look at shelving in a whole new light. Look at ways to 
create interest through through shelving to, to, to be able to create a dimensional look. This is also perfect for rooms that have no architectural detail, uh, sort of boxy, simple rooms, maybe rooms that don't have any crown molding or any kind of interest to in them. Number two, stagger the simple shelvings to create interest. So really inexpensive shelving, and instead of sort of lining it all up and making it feel, uh, you know, just completely expected, create the unexpected. This is, this is again, such a simple thing to do because it doesn't cost a lot of money if you go and you just buy really um, basic shelving, and it's all in the placement. Creating a simple stagger look, even if it's all one color, and then, uh, and then changing it up with what you put on the shelving, or maybe even whatever you, whatever it is that you display on your shelving, maybe it's the same color as the shelving, so it's all kind of monochromatic and creates a, a, a very simple line, but then every once in a while you put in an object on there that has a different texture or a different color to kind of break it all up and create uh, some visual, some visual pop, if you will. Uh, yeah, and you will, and I will too. We'll all just pop. <laughs> pop with joy from these brownies. This is so good, I'm telling you. So good. Uh, number three, curate it. Act as if you're your own personal art curator. A group colors, objects, and collectibles make the ordinary look extraordinary. See that little play of words, ordinary, extraordinary. That's all I got. Uh, the, the, the beauty of something like this is that you can take basic shelving or basic bookcases that sometimes aren't that exciting, but by what you display on them, you can make them exciting. So if you're grouping collections together on, on, on some shelves, maybe even grouping uh, certain types of books that have uh, a specific color in the binder, the book binding, or size, and different types of objects, artwork, and just really sort of playing with it, mixing it around, creating groups. And here's the beauty of this, you're not married to whatever it is that you do. You can always change it up. And it takes an ordinary bookshelf or uh, or bookcase and makes it instantly that much more interesting. Number four, keep it clean and simple, especially in a small space. I love open shelving in kitchens. I think it's it's a really great look in addition to cupboards, especially since in kitchens sometimes too many cabinets can start to feel really heavy. So if you're remodeling, think about ways to add some open shelving, and even in bathrooms too. But when you do that, you have to think about making that open shelving work for you, not only in terms of storage, but also work for you so it doesn't feel cluttered and, and really busy. And one of, the, uh, one of the really simple ways to do that is to keep all the items on that shelving uh, one color, or keep them all clear, keep it all glass, and then have it maybe be the same color as the shelving. So it creates a really simple, elegant look, but at the same time, it's practical. That combination to me is spectacular. I love when things not only look great, but they have a real function. Number five, make it fun. It's shelving, people. It's not, you know, it's not brownies. It's, shel <laughs> it's shelving. So keep it fun, keep it light, keep it interesting, especially if you're designing kids' rooms. And, and here's the key with shelving and bookcases in kids' rooms. Involve them in that process. Because if you're trying to organize your kids through shelving and bookcases, if you just kind of organize it for them and say, okay, so here it is, you know, now you got to keep it organized, they have no investment in it. You want them to be a part of that. You want them to, to feel like they had something to do with the way that it was organized and designed. So have them help you pick out the shelving they want, the bins that they might want to uh, store things in on the shelving, maybe the things they want to display on the shelving. Make it fun, make it interesting, and make it you know an art piece that's always evolving. So those are my top five tips for shelving and decorating shelving in your own house. I hope you enjoyed them, and I hope that they are helping you get organized. Uh, and as always, you can share your ideas and ask questions. Go to AngeloHome.com, click on Ask Angelo. You can submit all your awesome awesomeness for Mondays because, you know, we're hoping to be back in April and with awesome awesomeness uh, and, and to answer your questions. But that's all I got for the last edition of the season on the Daily Tip, the TDT. Hope you had a great season. We did. We did. And we hopefully will come back to see you guys. Uh, have an awesome weekend. And I, yeah, I'm going to talk to you later. Bye.